So after this, now we can now we can now answer what we are being given to us to answer. You know, we have been given we are, the question. The question that was given that normally we solve what we supposed to solve, but we've not answered the question that that we, that we asked. The question that we were asked to answer, we've not answered because they say that. The question one say that A say that what decision will be made by managers if they act in the best interest of their division and in the best interest of their bonus. That is, if they want to consider their divisions alone and their bonus, they know that is the more is their return on investment. Is how much how, how big their return on investment is is, is what will they generate generate for them as their income, as their own bonus. So that means they are going to consider the their own how big they are in terms of So our answer now will now be if the man you will know, note is two hundred and ninety one. If manager want to act act in the in their in the best interest of their own bonus and their division, you now put that that will be the ending. So you now put one. Now put division A. Division A, you see that division A this is their return on investment. Here is thirty percent and here is 25%. That is before the over is 20%, after the over is 25%. That means their return on investment is higher if they do not take the offer. Now, the division A will, will reject the offer because their return on investment is 30% if they do not take the offer. And the offer will make their return on investment to, to reduce, or the offer will dilute their return on investment from 30% to 27.5%. So then, that is one. Then, the second task will now be Division B. Division B will accept the offer because Division B will accept the offer because their return on investment is because it will increase their return on investment from 10% to 11%. That is for Division Division B. That means what fit for division A does not fit for division B. That is that is the question that we just answered now is under if they want to act on their on the best interest of their own and their division. On their in their, their, their own bonus and their division. Now if they want second question that if they want to act on the best interest of the company as a whole. Now you now say we want to answer that question also. You say if they want to act in the best interest of their of the company as a whole, that means division A. Division A should accept the other because it's going to increase. It's going to increase the residual income. It's going to increase the residual income of the company from forty-five thousand naira to fifty thousand naira. Division A should accept the other if they want to ask in the best interest of the company as a whole. Division A should accept the other because because it's going to increase. It's going to increase the residual income of the company. From forty-five thousand naira to fifty thousand naira, then that is dash one. Then dash two will not not also be like division division B should reject the offer because it's going to increase the loss. It's going to increase the losses of the company from five thousand naira to eight thousand naira. It's going to increase the losses of the company from five thousand naira to eight thousand naira. So that is how we answer the two questions. And like that, we are done with this question. So we can now move to the next one, which is number four. Yes, question four. Dandav Limited. Dandav Limited operates with two divisions, A and B. The group cost of capital is 13%. Divisional manager's performance is measured on the base on this basis. The, the divisions are planning for next year's operations with the following estimates. We have divisions A and B. They, they gave us sales, and they gave us cost of sales. Then when you less sales, sales minus cost of sales gave us gross profit. Then operating expenses, then we get net profit. Then net asset is 15 million and 19 million respectively. Net asset simply also means capital employed. Net asset also means capital employed. So then the division have the following proposal for proposals before the budget is implemented so division a division a dispose dispose the machine that was purchased five years ago at five 
million naira. The machine presently generates sales of two million two million naira per annum with profit of ten percent of seed. Then they acquired a new machine for twelve million naira, which will generate sales of four million naira per annum and profit of eight percent of seed. Then division B acquired a new a new equipment for 3 million naira which will generate sales of 1.7 million naira per annum and profit of 12% of sales. The group deposition unknown current assets at 10% per annum on straight line method. That is if you have the non current assets, but here we don't have so required. Compute the return on investment and residual income for each division before the proposals that is one two compute the return on investment and residual income for each division after the proposal so on this question yeah this particular question falls under under a company that has a proposal that is what they ask us to do here is like like what the question said that compute the return on investment and residual income for the company before the proposal and compute the return on investment and residual income for the company after the proposal now what we are, what we are expected to do here is to first compute the return on investment using the information that was provided using the information that was provided here alone without looking at anything about the proposal. So we now say computation of return on investment without proposal. Computation of return on investment and residual income before before proposal. Before proposal. We have Dandaf Limited. The company name is important, we have to be putting in. Dandaf Limited. Then we have two divisions, right? We have Division A, Division A, and we have, we have Division B. We have Division A, and we have Division B. Then, so return on investment, return on investment will not be, you know, is profit divided by capital employed. So and say our capital employed is our net assets. Our net asset, total asset, the total money that we are using to run the business is our capital employed. So here yeah, in this particular case, they give they restate it as capital employed, they set it as net assets. Net assets. So now our profit is two Two thousand eight fifty. Yes, our profit is our, our profit for division A is two thousand three hundred. That is, is a million. So that is why we have to put this triple zero up. So our profit is two million three hundred thousand. So we put two. 2,300 because we have triple zero in the A is 2,850,000 so we have 2,850,000 then our capital employed our capital employed is 50 million and 90 million respectively so we put 15,000 here we have triple zero then we put 19,000 we have triple zero times 100 over 1 times 100 over 1 so we compute this. So this two million two thousand three hundred divided by fifteen million is going to give us times hundred over one. Is going to give us fifteen point thirty three percent. And this one also two 
2850 divided by 19,000 19, is million because we have, so times 100 over 1 is going to give us 50%. So that is return on investment before the proposal. Now, receiver income before, before the proposal also. You know, you have the reason. We have division A and we have division B. Now, division for residual income is a profit minus total cost. Then we have profit minus total cost. So our profit is two two three hundred. Here is 2850, right? Then our imputed cost, which is cost of capital multiplied by capital employed. The complete cost of, cost of capital is given as how much? The cost is given as 13 percent. So we say 13 percent, you can say 13 percent or 0 0.13 times capital employed, which is 15 million, right? Times 15 million. Then for year two, 13 percent times 19 million. So what is it going to give us? So we'll be getting 1950, 1950, and here we get 2470. So we minus it and get our residual income. So we have 350 here, 350. And we have 380. So that is our residual income before the proposal. Just apply the formula that is profit, profit minus imputed cost to give us the residual income. To give us the residual income. Right? So, okay, this one says supposed to be there. 30 percent times. 450, so, so this is our residual income. So, so once we are able to get, this is our return on investment and residual income that is before the proposal. Now, you know said after the proposal, now compute, that's a computation of, of return on investment and residual income after after the proposal after the proposal so we have division division A and we have division and we have division B now for under division A we have return on investment investment which is Profit over capital employed. Capital employed times only over one. Now, they say that we want to compute our return on investment after the proposal. So, in the first stage, their, their normal return on, their normal formula for return on investment before the proposal first. That is, what is the profit before the proposal? We have profit of two, two, three hundred, and their capital employed is 15, 15 three hundred because we are having triple zero here. So now for the for division A. They were using they were using 15 million before as a capital employed and to generate profit of 2,300. Now after the new proposal now said that this is a disposed machine that was purchased five years ago at five million now. That is out of out of their capital employed. They've they 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 disposed five million from it. 
they sold the machine. Out of the machine, the total machine that they are using to generate, generate this profit, they sold one of it at five million. And that means this fifty million we, we reduced. That is minus five million naira. Minus five million naira. And the questions still follow follow that. The machine presently generates sales of two million per annum with profit of ten percent of sales. That is, the machine, that machine generates sales of two million, and that two million, ten percent of that sales is of is profit. That means that machine is generating profit of ten percent of two million, which is two hundred thousand. So that means when the when our capital employee reduces, the the profit that is that capital employee is generating. That machine is generating, we also reduce that. We are going to minus it also 200,000. So that is the first. Then they now say they follow that they say that they acquire a new, a new machine for 12 million naira. That means the, the capital employee will also increase, we also be added again. You know, they sold one that we minus it, they sold one 5 million naira. We bought another one 12 million, naira. then you add it again 12 million naira. You add it again, and that 12 million naira will be generating profit of that 12 million naira will be generating profit of how much? That 12 million naira will be generating profit of. You can do it separately. You can do for each division separately. That 12 million naira will be generating profit of. Will be generating sales of 4 million per annum and profit of 8 percent of sales. That means the profit that that. New, new machine that was purchased 12 million will be generating is 8% of 4 million. So, what is the 8% of 4 million? 8% of 4 million will be 8% of 4 million will be 320,000. So, we now say plus 320 plus 320. So, this is how we are going to compute our return on investment after the new proposal. That is, the turn on investment after the new proposal is that before the proposal, we were using 50 million naira to generate profit of 2, two million and 300,000. Then, we sold the machine out of this, out of, let's say, out of this net asset, which is our machine and all the equipment that we are using to, 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 make, to, to produce, our, to make our sales and generate profit. We sold the machine 5 million. So we might not see from our net asset, from our capital employed, it has been reduced. Then, that capital employed that we sold is generating, was generating profit of 200,000. That means we cannot be making that profit of 200,000 again. Then we might not see from our profit. Then, we now bought another machine at 12 million naira. That means we add it back to our capital employed. Our capital employed has been increased again. We add it back. Then, and that 12 million naira will be generating profit of. 8% of sales. That uh, machine that we purchased 12 million naira, we will generate sales of 4 million. And that 4 million naira, the profit of that 4 million, from that 4 million, 4, 4 million naira is 8%. So when you calculate the 8% of 4 million naira, we give you 320,000. So that means we are going to add it back to the profit. So then we add then times 100 over 1. So our return on investment, return on investment will now be. Two, you add everything, you do the summation of everything. Two four two, two four two zero over twenty two thousand, twenty twenty two million, right? So times hundred over one. So we get equal to we get eleven percent. Then you turn on investment for then you calculate for. Division B also for division B. Division division B. So for division B, we turn on investment. Before they are which is profit over capital employed. Capital employed. So their profit before is their profit before was before the new proposal was was two 
2850 and their capital employee was 19, 19 million. We are putting triple there because we have triple zero up here. So now they say division B from the question. They say division B division B acquired a new machine for three million. That means their capital employee increase three million. Three million, right? And which will generate sales of 1.7 per annum and profit of 23 of sales. That's all. That means this one does not sell out of their machine. They not sell their capital is not reduced. It's only increased. And that increment will bring about that increment will bring about profit of profit of profit of 12% of 1.7, that is 12% of seed. They say it's the next sales of 1.7 and profit is 12% of seed. Now 12% of that 1.7 will give us 12% of that 1.7 will give us 204,000, 204,000, 204,000. So plus 204, 204,000. We have to put there. So it should now be, it should now be 3, O five four divided by twenty two million times hundred over one. So our return on investment on division B will now be thirteen point eighty eight percent. It's got to thirteen point eighty eight percent. So that is our return on investment for division B. for division B after after the proposal. So now we can now compose for the residual income. For residual income, we can now compose for residual income for division B. We can now compute for residual income for division B. So residual income for division B after proposal. Let's use this place. Okay, and then I go for the for both division after proposal. Now residual income, once you get your return on investment, residual income is not high at all. Now residual income for residual income. Okay, computation for residual income after proposal. Computation for residual income after proposal. After proposal. So it will now be residual income is we have division A. Division A and division division B. Division A and division B. Now residual income. Residual income. The formula for residual income is profit minus imputed cost. Imputed cost. So it give us residual income. Now imputed cost is cost of capital minus capital input. Imputed cost is equal to cost of capital times capital employed. So now the profit for division A. I think I've set this earlier in the so you don't need to do it. So profit for a zero income. Profit for division A after the after the proposal is how much? Profit for division A after the proposal is two we have no sign two four two zero and for division B is three zero five four and three million five zero five then input cost input cost that is cost of capital the cost of capital for the company is what? The cost of capital for the company is 30%, right? So 30 
times capital employed after the proposal for so division A is 22, the, for both of them is 22,000, 22 million. Then for 30 is 13 percent times 22 million. For both of them, it's 22 million. So that is the capital employed. That is when we move this one plus this one, and here this one minus this one plus this one. Give us twenty-two. This one plus this one also give us twenty-two. So that means we are going to get eight. Our input cost will be two eight sixty, and here to two eight sixty. So when we minus it, we get one nine four, and here we get four forty in the negative. So we are done with this number four. So, so this is where the number four also ends. The question said that we should compute the return on investment and residual income before the proposal, and we should compute the return on investment and residual income after the proposal. So this is what we've done. We've computed, we've earlier computed the return on investment and residual income before the proposal. And this is our return on investment and residual income after the proposal. This is the return on investment before the proposal for each for division A and for division B. Then this is the residual income after the this return on investment residual income after the proposal for division A and division B and this is the residual income for after the proposal for division A and division B. So that is all about the our topic for today. If there is any other question that we will not touch and it's under this particular question and we want it to we want it to get solved, you can reach me on my WhatsApp number 081-640-31819. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment on my page. God bless.